In celebration of what has been a remarkable 30-year-long journey of creating South Africa's leading cap classique, we are honoring two icons today and paying tribute to them. One, an esteemed sparkling wine that has come full circle to find its focus and honor its niche, and the other, a master craftsman in pursuit of the perfect bubble. And it's all happening at the Graham Beck Estate in Robertson, where it all began, where seller master Peter Bubbles Ferreira shares his fascinating insights into this three-decade-long dedication to excellence. We find out more on this joyous milestone with raising a glass to celebrate what matters. Oh, Peter, how are you doing? Good so to good see to you. see you. Fantastic. Good to see you. It's so beautiful here. Yeah. Welcome at Grainbeck and uh, yeah, let's go inside. Let's go, let's go. Mr. Peter Bubbles Ferreira, the man of the moment. It's so good to meet you. Fantastic. It's really great that uh, yeah, we could uh, spend some time here in Robertson and uh, Looking forward to showing you around. Your story is quite fascinating. I have to start here. Did you always want to be a winemaker? How did you find yourself in this space? 1984, I, I was op offered an opportunity to join Achim von Arnhem in Franschhoek, producing Pierre Jordan. It happened to be the first um, specialist producer of Babli, so I spent crazy seven years with him, and then uh, I ventured on to Grambeck. Look at you moving from French Hook all the way to Robertson. We've got to talk about why Grambeck State is based in Robertson. Amazing visionary, you know, he was a coal miner by trade and then he ventured into breeding of thoroughbred horses. Horses always ran second. And one day he was quite curious. After a race day, he says, but my horses, he says, Mr. Beck, you need to bring your horses to Robertson. So uh, this is the story on the wall. Uh, he brought his horses here and all of a sudden he became the most successful breeder. Then there was a tragic Lanesburg flood, but then uh, he was talked into buying the farm Adiba and then, yeah, the splendor of what you see uh, today is reality. And it's breathtaking, it really is. But you know, every winemaker has a really fascinating story about how they landed their job, but yours is just so unconventional. How did you, how did you get this job? Oh man, this is, <laughs> this is a crazy story, <laughs> <laughs> I must tell you. Uh, Jan Boerland Kusia, one of my greatest mentors, he was approached by Graham Beck and he says, listen, I want an architect, I want all the right engineers, I need a winemaker, and you put it all together. So uh, he had the meeting, yeah, he, on his way to Stellenbosch, he stopped in front of, he stopped at me and says, listen, I need you to be part of this. So we went for a meeting. With who? Is this now the no. meeting where you met Mr. Graham Beck for the first time? I didn't know how he looked like or anything like that. We stood there quite nervous, you know, we didn't know what to expect. Out comes the man, beautifully tanned, Bermuda shorts, beautiful cotton shirt, looked like he just came from the Bahamas type of thing. And he looked around, he says, morning, who's the architect around here? Johan Vessel's hand went up. He says, you have all the right guys around you, please build me a cellar. And that was my introduction to Graham Beck. And so the journey began. You've got to tell me more about Graham Beck, I have to we? tell you, let me, <laughs> let me show you around. So I'm going to just show you a typical day in uh, Bubbles Ferreira's life. Is uh, We've got work set out for later today where we have some uh, wines that we're going to look at consistency and continuity. It's not a bad looking office. What would you choose, cycling or surfing? Mountain biking. Uh, it's just amazing to get into the nature and into our beautiful mountain passes mm. to cycle. You must have a long bucket list. Uh, are there items on uh, Peter Ferreira's bucket list that you've either ticked off already and that you are yet to embark on, that you're yet to take off? I remain aspirational, so uh, I have many boxes still to tick. <laughs> <laughs> and back on the wine, what's your favorite wine variety? Well, um, I have to say, if there was a variety called Bubble, <laughs> it, it would have it been better. <laughs> but uh, obviously Chardonnay, mm. uh, the magic of Chardonnay, there's four glasses in front of us. Mm. Uh, it's just the diversity, the flexibility of a variety, knowing that uh, Robertson made Chardonnay famous in the early 80s. Yeah. I really uh, sort of, connect today that Grainbeck had a vision 
to make Chardonnay the king. So uh, it is it is undoubtedly been my favorite variety Chardonnay. It's beautiful. So I'm going to show you where the magic really happens. Um, ah. So there you can see the yeast. So the yeast would run down the neck of the, and eventually end up in the neck of the bottle. Wow. With the bottle being upright. It takes a lot of time. It's definitely a labor of, of patience, but you've got to tell me where then and when was the first Graham Beck vintage uh, vinified? Well, uh, it's an amazing story. 91 was our maiden vintage and you've seen the size of the, the, the winery. We had uh, little mobile presses, and the one day we will harvest on that side while they're throwing concrete on the other side. There was no roof on the building or anything. And then the next morning, the press, we will bring it right around and we'll harvest that side while they throw cement this side. So it's really an amazing. We call it the vintage under the stars. Oh. That is, that just sounds charming. I love it. Uh, but let's talk about some of those earlier challenges because that must have presented lots of challenges in the earlier years of Graham Beck. What were those challenges? I think uh, more understanding the terroir uh, of Robertson itself. Um, I think, you know, great wine doesn't start in the winery. It starts in the vineyard. So uh, understanding uh, the lie of the land, how much and where the um, limestone deposits were at its richest and obviously understanding to make sure that we plant those those vineyards which we have uh, today um, you know that makes up our beautiful portfolio of Cap Classiques. And why only Cap Classique? We just realized we can't be everything to everyone and uh, that we it was time to sort of relook, take a snapshot and the work that we did to um, uh, the research came back. Everybody was asked, what, are, who, what do you think about Graham Beck? They say it's bubbles. And so now... That's how it all happened. We're here. And look at this. I love it. So, uh, welcome to the nursery room and the barrel room on that side. Wow. And the nursery, nursery school this side. This is so beautiful. I'm selfishly gasping for air, just taking it all in. This is the vintage under the stars. Oh, 1991. It's still alive. Look at the bubble in there. It certainly must, in my 30 years, be the one that says, wow, Graham Beck has started. I've I have to tell you, I've never drank anything that's about the same age as I am. So this should be quite special. Put it here, Prost. Uh, but what stands out to you about this one? Hmm. You know, it's a little bit like I, when I wake up in the morning and my feet hits the ground, I want to celebrate. If you could change anything about Graham Beck, what would it be and why? I'll start all over again. <laughs> <laughs> as we stand in the nursery school, I think this keeps us focused. It keeps the attention to detail there. And really, I, uh, I wouldn't like to change anything. I think uh, we've come the full circle and uh, it's now that we have to lead by example. And along the way, you earned yourself the nickname Bubbles, which is pretty obvious, I suppose, that there's no asking why, but where did that nickname come from and how? Um, from a very dear friend of mine, Mel Melvin Minna, uh, from Cape Town. And uh, yeah, this name has stood the test of times. I think we got around that after a very long uh, weekend of uh, drinking lots of bubbles. <laughs> and uh, he says, you are Bubbles Ferreira. <laughs> and so Malfane gave me the name and it's, it's really synonymous now. It's you know, stuck. So it, it's stuck. That's yes. your brand. And tell me, I mean, over the years, 30 years is a long time, memories collected, lessons learned. Uh, what's your biggest lesson been? We're in pursuit of the perfect bubble. We find every year and every new vintage that we bring into Graham Beck, there is something new that we can add to the contribution of a smaller bubble. So Tabiso, yeah. yeah, we just would like to show you a little bit of the different fermentation vessels we use. We have cement egg, mm -hmm. we have terracotta, yeah. uh, we have fudra and uh, smaller barrels on the far side. And we even have introduced some ceramic nice. as a fermentation. Let's go 
go and taste some more. Let's do it. Before we go anywhere, I have to show you this. Okay, show I me. I have to. Let me what? show you. What's your favorite Cap Classic at the moment? Blanc de Blanc comes to mind. You spend a lot of time looking at champagnes as well. Do you have a favorite champagne? Yeah, it depends whether you're talking for breakfast, lunch or dinner. Or any but time of the day. Any time of the day. I have <laughs> because to it's show, always a good time for I champagne. I have to show you one special bottle. Oh. It's Comte de Champagne from Tattinger. Mm. It is a vintage that I've been following since 1998. And uh, I've never missed the vintage yeah. ever since. Yeah. And really, it gives me divine inspiration. It's all about Chardonnay, because yeah. it's 100% Chardonnay. Stunning. And again, I think, you know, we selfishly go and sit in the little corner of the cellar, yeah. drink a bottle, and we understand what we need to find uh, for Blanc de Blanc in Grainbeck. Well, you have a very special relationship with Champagne. Please tell me the story of your wife that's got to do with champagne, and that's got to do with an engagement or a proposal. Oh, it sounds like a romantic you've done uh, your setting homework. already. I have done my homework. <laughs> to me, champagne has been special. I've been very fortunate during my career that I could do some vintages there. Mm. So it was really a special place to go to. And she, the, the year before uh, our uh, engagement, yeah. she worked in France, so it was a good excuse to go and see her and uh, we ventured on to Champagne and uh, I uh, had a bottle of Dom Perignon <laughs> with me. You were drinking the stars. And I proposed on the park bench. Bubbles, you're also quite the world travelled man, I must say. I mean, your travels are so inspiring and I'm actually quite envious of all of that. Uh, but what's your favourite destination? I've seen some incredible cities uh, all around the world, but it's so tough to to give you a favorite, but uh, it's it's rather special. But the, the road that leads to my beach house <laughs> is also special, you know, if we get the time to do that. Well, yes, you've seen uh, lots of cities all over the world, but you've also tasted lots of foods. You've done lots of food pairings and wine pairings and the works. What's your uh, sort of favorite food and wine pairing? I love farm to table type mm. of thing. So to me, freshness and really, you know, great care that's been taken into the food. Bubbles, how would you describe uh, the man himself, Mr. Graham Beck? Uh, he's, I know he's looking upon us, so uh, it's really special. Being part of the family for 30 years uh, brings fond memories of him, uh, but I do really, if there's one thing that sticks in my mind, it's that he was a visionary. Just simply worked on having the right idea working on gut and bringing us really where we are today. Having spent so many years with the family, you must have really connected and gotten to connect with both uh, Mr. Graham Beck and of course, Rona Beck. Uh, what are some of your fondest memories of these two? Well, it's really, the, the relationship between the two was unbelievable. It was beyond um, just being a role model for any, 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 any person or any couple um, and uh, uh, really integrity, passion for life, the caring for people. There's just so many things that really comes into mind. That, and I will never forget one thing. Graham Beck in the very early years of my life says, you can only be as good as the people you employ. <sighs> it's resonant through the whole business of Grainbeck and sort of the business beyond. Uh, it's really something that really is, is quite special. Mm. Building a team and having that sort of support structure is one thing that you've certainly learned from uh, spending time with Mr. Beck. Uh, but what other lessons uh, have you been able to take out of your experience and your, your time spent with, with him and uh, Rona Beck? One thing is he always reminded you, you work hard to play hard. He's certainly known to have been a major, major philanthropist. Giving back was really at the core of his essence. Uh, uh, what did that teach you and what sort of window did that op open for you? Brings a bit of goosebumps 
I can into, tell your you face know, lights up even. It brings brings so many really important lessons in life. You know, um, philanthropy in the Graham Beck business today li lies on two important pillars: people and sustainable farming. Mm. Sustainable farming driven by Rona Beck and more about the philanthropy side, looking after people, employing the right ones, making sure that they have a future in the Grainbeck family business uh, was really the two pillars that still really drives the company. Peter, in your opinion, what do you think has been the key ingredient to the success of Graham Beck? It's a combination of many things. I think uh, it is the dedication of everybody that has been involved with Graham Beck. I think we have to really understand, and it's been proven over the years, that Robertson has proved to be the better cup to seek producing area. And then thirdly, the dedication of keeping the wines as consistent through the years for the consumer out there. Ooh, that I would is the love, sound of celebration. I'd love to show you uh, 1994. Now 1994 has been extremely special for Graham Beck. Mm as it was the chosen drink for Nelson Mandela's inauguration. So the first democratic elected president of South Africa, pathing its way to getting South Africa into the international wine business again. We were the drink of choice. Wow, this so uh, this is a 94 uh, Magnum, which really would uh, most probably will be a little highlight. Um, I think it becomes quite personal if I have to go into many, many more things. But we've had some beautiful accolades over the years. And what's your vision for Graham Beck looking into the future? We remain aspirational as a brand. We want to be the leader in South Africa, but we want to also be recognised in most countries that we do sell our wines in. So, yeah, I think it's an aspirational journey that is now left and hopefully we can pave that for the next 30 years. What is your message to Graham Beck and the extended Graham Beck family as you celebrate this milestone? Uh, first of all, uh, I do a huge toast to the family who uh, you know, brought me here 30 years ago. And uh, yeah, it's been an incredible journey. And uh, secondly, I'd like to toast uh, my fellow colleagues who's uh, been with Graham Beck for so many years. And uh, I hope to inspire them for many years going forward, uh, making sure that we take uh, Graham Beck to the next level. That is such an incredible story. Peter, thank you very much for spending the time today and sharing this experience with me. I really have had such an, an incredible time. I have connected in the most beautiful way to the Grand Beck story and hopefully this inspires so many other people out there watching right now to really continue to celebrate what matters, right? Thank you very much. Okay. And yet to the next 30 years of Grand Beck. Cheers everyone. Thank you.